really, if we think about it, all distributed ledger technology, or blockchain as sometimes called, is, is about a ledger. And traditionally, a ledger has been around you know, since the dawn of time. And dictionaries describe it as a book in which items are regularly recorded, especially business activities, uh, such as recording transactions about money paid and so forth. So this is really the concept of a ledger. So if we start talking about blockchain or distributed ledger technologies, I'll just use the terms interchangeably there, um, we're really talking about a digital ledger. That is some sort of electronic record of a series of data items. So it doesn't necessarily just have to be handwritten transactions. It can record potentially any type of data. And these sort of technologies, distributed ledger technologies, have a number of other properties as well. Typically, they tend to be accessible by multiple parties. That is, different people can view the ledger and potentially write to the ledger as well, entering new transactions. And generally, there's some sort of distribution in terms of multiple copies of the ledger existing rather than just one physical book. There's often an agreed process for adding new ledger entries. So i.e. adding new transaction to the ledger needs some sort of agreement in this space. And there's a bunch of math, crypto, and protocols that surround this ledger that give it some sort of integrity or some sort of guarantees. And what I think the key takeaway from my presentation is that there's actually a range of possible implementations of this technology. It can be used in different contexts, different circumstances, and the actual nature of the technology can be different in each one of these. So if you're trying to think about what the concerns are, what your responsibilities are, et cetera, it really depends on what you're implementing, what you're using it for, and the particular technical in incantation that you're using as well. <clears throat> but just a brief aside, why is there some interest in blockchain, um, aside from becoming you know, cryptocurrency millionaires and all that sort of thing, why businesses become interested in it is kind of related to the properties above. If you have a digital ledger that's accessible by multiple parties, that has some degree of integrity, or you can be sure about it, it enables disintermediation. You don't need to have like, everything centralized. You can enable sort of direct marketplaces, um, visibility across organizations to help manage your supply chain. You can see what other organizations are doing and so forth. And if you have some sort of strong record keeping system, it acts as a source of truth from which you can build other applications and services on top of. So that's kind of why business tends to be interested in this space. So let's get on to the technology itself. So we'll start with building or the building blocks of blockchain. And the first thing we'll consider is what is a block? A block is essentially, um, you can think of it as a page in a traditional ledger, in a hard copy ledger. It essentially encapsulates a bunch of ledger entries, a bunch of transactions, et cetera, with some extra metadata attached. So just in a typical ledger <laughs> physical book, you have a page, you might have a, some metadata such as the page number, and then a series of transactions within that. A block is very much the same, a series of records with some metadata associated with it. Important in a blockchain context is this concept of hashing. A hash function is essentially a, a function that if you give it a specific input, it will produce the same uh, specific output, and the same input will always produce the same output. Essentially what is used in blockchain is that a hash is computed over a value, a hash value is computed rather over the contents of a particular block. So for this particular block where you have three records, the colors aren't quite showing up, but in some metadata, this block might have a particular hash number here starting with AA. But even the tiniest change to some of that data in the block will result in a completely different hash. A number one being a number two, for instance, will create a completely different hash value. And this is important because this actually brings about the integrity of this ledger, of this system, as we'll talk about in a second. The second key concept is that of a chain. The chain is essentially a, a series or a collection of blocks. It's a kind of the equivalent in the real world context of the book, the ledger, uh, a, a book consisting of a number of different pages. Here we have a chain consisting of a number of different blocks. And how this ledger is formed is essentially having each block <coughs> referring to the block that precedes it. So if we look on the right, we have block 24 actually encodes within it the hash of block 23. That is block 24 says, I am the block that follows the block with AAB3973. So in other words, each block refers to the one preceding it. So this is how it brings about integrity. So let's say someone came in and wanted to change some transactional record on block 23. As we said before, that hash function will change because any value in a block that changes, um, it changes the hash value, sorry, as a result. So here, that block has changed from AABE blah, 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 to when it's tampered with, to being FA7756. And what this does is effectively break the chain because now block 24 is no longer referring to that AA block, which no longer exists. So this is how it sort of brings about integrity or surety about, about the ledger itself. So that's how the ledger is created, a bunch of pages, transactions added to a record. 
But an important aspect is how this is used in practice. How do you actually agree the transactions that should be included on the ledger? Or more specifically, how do you decide the blocks that should be added to the chain? And this really depends on the particular application scenario. You quite often hear blockchain being talked about as useful in a land registry example. And to be fair, quite often those examples are talking about completely different uh, mechanisms for uh, recording land titles and so forth. But if we take a more traditional ap approach to land registry where there might be a land registry office for a particular region or something like that, it's actually a very centralised type model. So you might imagine this ledger being maintained by the land registry office and then it's their responsibility to decide what transactions are added to the ledger. In other words, what blocks are added to the chain. So this might, here in a blockchain context, might give you some integrity, but you still have all the issues of trust, power, resilience, et cetera. And ultimately, these sorts of scenarios don't really suit the technology 